Hey, once again, thanks for uh, clicking on this video. I'm Billy Williams. I work with uh, Diesel Care and Performance. And today we're going to be having another in our series of tutorials. And this one's kind of special because it's one you, the viewers, requested. And it's a more uh, expansive uh, teardown procedure for a DB2. And so we're going to delve into that right now. So let's get started. So we'll get started with the video here. Um, you'll notice the first thing he's taking off is the return line connector. Um, you'll want to look up inside that and make sure that there's no particles or debris. Uh, get you an o-ring pick and squeeze it against that uh, glass ball that's in there. Um, if you don't feel the spring tension back, you'll want to replace that. Uh, he started to take the top cover off now. Um, one thing I would um, recommend that you do that he didn't do in the video is just get you a small hammer and just lightly tap those screws. Um, you don't want to break them off in the housing and create a, a bad day. So he's got the top cover off. Uh, now he's going to begin working on the up, upper throttle assembly. Um, one of the first things that he will do is he'll get this uh, uh, retaining pin out and um, you'll notice that he's not hitting on the pin itself he's hitting on the uh, pair of pliers that's holding it because um, if you hit on the end of the pin you'll mushroom it out and it'll take forever to get it out of there So moving on, he's going to remove the face cam. Um, now the face cam is one that you'll want to, that, that's an item you'll want to look at for wear. Um, it's very distinguishable. If you'll see where the roller has eaten into the face cam, you're going to want to replace that. Um, so he's beginning to um, take the uh, retaining cap um, off of the rear fuel cone um, and now he's going to be taking off the pivot arm assembly. A um, couple of things because you guys are not going to be calibrating uh, your pumps in the field. Um, this adjustment screw that's at the bottom of the uh, pivot arm, you don't want to take that out. You want to leave that in the same position that it is. Um, because you don't, um, you're not going to have the ability to calibrate um, uh, that adjustment. So he's um, um, the next thing is he's going to remove his guide stud. Um, there are several different designs. Uh, some use a seven sixteenths wrench. Some use an Allen. Um, but basically what you want to do is you want to loosen the jam nut like what he's doing and then you want to back the guide stud all the way out. Um, when you uh, go to reassemble it, um, and I'm assuming that'll be a subsequent video, we will uh, show you how to reset that guide stud to get it as close as possible. But purposes of this, he's going to get it out. There's an O-ring up inside that jam nut. You want to um, make sure you get that out. Uh, now he's going to start disassembling the uh, governor assembly, the upper portion. Um, there is a, a throttle return spring that he just uh, released. Um, you want to remember that. A big common rookie mistake is you put your throttle in, you get everything back assembled, and then you realize you forgot your spring. Um, the guide block, the piece he just took out, there is a spring that goes up inside there and the guide stud slides up into that. Make sure you don't lose that spring. Make sure it's in there when you're doing your reassembly. Um, so now he's pulling out the governor linkage. You're just going to set that aside. Um, now he's going to be pulling out the metering valve uh, which comes straight out. Now this is really really important what he's about to do. This is taking out what's called the vent wire. Um, the vent wire is in the uh, corner of the cavity there. A lot of people don't remove that. 
And when they go to drive the head out, they scar the housing and render it useless. Um, so it's very, very important to make sure you get that net wire out. Now he's starting to um, uh, loosen his uh, head locating bolts. Uh, again, um, you know, sharp wrap with the hammer will help kind of free those up a little bit uh, if you have a pump that's not in this pristine of condition. Um, now uh, he's going to be taking off the um, um, fuel cone and he's after he tightens his vice up a little bit um, and sometimes you might want to give that a little bit of a, a wrap with a hammer um, it's in there pretty good and it's fine thread looks like he's really struggling with this actually some of that quality editing folks we're we're actually doing mechanic work here so um, you know we, we may actually have to uh, come up with an inventive way of doing something And now his uh, young prowess has uh, paid off, and he's gotten the um, gotten the cap off. Um, he's going ahead and he's going to take off. Uh, well, um, uh, he's got his location screws um, loosened. Uh, you will notice, side note, that plate that we're holding in. If you uh, are going to be doing more than one of these. You invest in a, a sheet of metal and um, and you know make you a nice holding fixture. It just it does make uh, life a lot easier. Um, now he is removing um, the lower the cam pin uh, access port. Uh, there's an O-ring on there that comes in the kit. Um, He's gonna. Uh, he's got a magnet. He's gonna be pulling out the uh, the cam pin. Uh, sometimes it'll give you a little bit of a, um, a little bit of trouble. Uh, it appears that he's giving it to him as well. Uh, what he's done here is he's gotten a pick, and he's gonna wrap it uh, a couple times to kind of free it up. That cam pin rides in the middle of the advanced piston and uh, sometimes you'll get some metal adhesion. Also if your pump's been sitting up for a long time all the water uh, that may have accumulated in your fuel system is going to be down there by that cam pin. Um, so just like in real life what may happen to you you got you may have to struggle and get some uh, needle nose pliers which is what he did he got that cam pin out and now um, it's on to just slimming the rest of the advance this bolt here uh, it is a special bolt uh, it's, it's the third in the, um, uh, the locating bolts um, it also has some gaskets on it that you'll need to replace that come in the gasket kit. So now he's got the um, uh, all of the head locating bolts out and um, he's going to start taking the advance uh, out of the bottom. Um, <laughs> If you're going to be doing this and you've never done it before, make sure you take pictures. Um, that'll kind of help you. For example, um, you know, another rookie mistake is putting the advance uh, well, plug, the adjustable plug on the wrong side. Um, again, uh, if you get in a hurry and you kind of forget some things, um, it's good to have something to go back to and kind of uh, refresh yourself, especially if, if you're not reassembling it almost immediately. So he's going to get that off. Now, um, one thing I, I need to interject here, um, the advance is where m most of the failures occur. So this advance piston that he's taking out, uh, that's a steel piston inside an aluminum housing, that housing wears. So in order to you to effectively um, uh, build your pump in the field, most likely you're going to have to get one of our housing kits 
it comes with the housing, with the uh, advanced pistons, everything's already set up. Now he uh, had a uh, rubber mallet, he knocked on the shaft to kind of uh, loosen the head, the head's going to slide back, um, and uh, that is your governor assembly slash head and rotor. Um, And so now um, he's going to um, remove the shaft and um, and then we will um, be ready to disassemble the head. Um, specialty tools, this is a pair of needle nose pliers that you we've had to modify um, slightly. Uh, you may have to get you a Dremel and kind of um, take them down just a little bit. Um, the drive shaft, as you see, it has uh, three umbrella seals, which that comes in the kit. Uh, there's a thrust washer um, and a, a thrust spring. Uh, I recommend changing all of that when you build it. That does not come in the kit. You'll need to order those separately. But what you're seeing here, when you buy our housing kit, it's going to come with everything there. So you'll be able to, um, this will be kind of your starting point for reassembly. Uh, if you buy a gasket kit, a new housing, um, and then your thrust washer and thrust bearing, um, this is where he's, he's disassembling the, the remainder of the, um, uh, of the pump. Um, he's taking that uh, nozzle cone off. Underneath here is your transfer pump uh, and your regulator. That's your filter screen, um, which doesn't need to be replaced unless it's torn. You will want to blow it out and make sure there's no debris in there. Um, the piece that he's got uh, in his hand here, that's the transfer pump regulator. Um, now, he is taking that apart. I would recommend if you're doing it in the field, not, not taking that apart. Just getting an O-ring pick and pressing down inside there and feeling that plunger move back and forth. Because you're not really going to have a way of setting it in the field. That's your blades and liners. Um, you'll probably be able to reuse them unless you've got uh, an excessive amount of wear. Uh, your retainer. Um, for your uh, rotors, uh, the rotor plates, he's getting those out right now um, and that will allow the rotor to slide out of the head. So again, um, probably wouldn't in the field probably wouldn't recommend changing out um, the or disassembling the transfer pump regulator. Um, right now he's uh, taking the delivery valve out. Um, um, so you'll want to do this um, the, if getting the delivery valve out um, it re does require a special tool. Uh, sometimes you can just take the rotor, turn it over and, and it'll slide out. Um, if it's stuck down in there, they do have a delivery valve puller. Um, hopefully you, you won't run into that. Um, uh, you can see he's, he is having to use the puller here. And basically it's a small clamp that goes around the end of the delivery valve. Again, depending on your failure, you may option not to do this. Um, the um, um, that's kind of a judgment call you'll have to make. Now, if if you're trying to get into pump rebuilding, um, then you'll want to invest in these tools, and you'll want to take the pump completely down, just like what we're we're doing there. So now he's got his delivery valve out. Uh, most likely, that'll be replaced. Um, those tend to have a, a a fair amount of wear. There's also a spring. Here he's taking out his rollers and shoes. Hardly ever need to be replaced unless there's some uh, major wear. 
Um, you can get by without uh, taking those apart. He, here he's taking out the pumping plungers. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, they come out free <coughs> and that they um, go back in the same way. Um, and you'll want to uh, look for wear on them. Uh, the wear will appear as a kind of a dull gray in what is otherwise a shiny um, piston. So you'll want to look for that. If you see that, then you'll uh, uh, want to look to replace those. So uh, we're almost home here, folks. Um, he's got the pump um, pretty much down uh, from here. There's not really anything else to do. Um, now you'd be ready to assess your parts. Um, I would recommend uh, doing extensive cleaning, uh, get familiar with your gasket kit, everything that uh, is in there um, uh, would need to be replaced. And, um, and then like I said, if you have a housing kit, a gasket kit, and then whatever other parts that you deem necessary to replace, uh, you should be on your way to rebuilding your, your pump. So we hope you enjoyed this uh, disassembly video. Uh, we will have uh, some subsequent videos uh, in the near future that will give you some uh, tricks and pointers on reassembly, and hopefully you can get your truck back running. Thanks again for watching. We appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Go ahead.